Hey folks, Parallel 17 has just been released. And from what I'm seeing, there's some really nice stuff packed in there. Now the improvements that are in Parallel 17 as opposed to 16.5 are really supposed to be huge for the Apple Silicon variety of computers. For the Intel based machines, it's just an incremental update. But for Apple Silicon, the M1, that's the machine I've got right here, MacBook Air, M1, and I'm gonna be doing some hands-on tests with this machine starting right now. This video is just a first look, but I'm gonna skip all the benchmark stuff because, well, you can find other videos on YouTube about that. I wanna get real hands-on here. I wanna test the startup times for Windows, memory usage, CPU usage, and we're gonna take a look at this version, which I have right here, 16.5, compared to the new version, Parallel 17, and we're gonna see the actual improvement. How much did it really improve on the Apple Silicon machines? In the next few videos, we'll test Windows 11, which is also an improvement. So they kind of work together. It's funny, we're seeing all these companies sort of work towards this goal. Apple has their own machines out now, Apple Silicon. Parallels worked with them last year to get their software ready for Apple Silicon and running on ARM. And Windows has been working on Windows ARM for about 10 years now, but it's finally really catching on now and they're really making some progress. So that's really nice to see. We're still not 100% yet. Not all the tools work yet, especially for developers, Visual Studio being a really big one. There is Visual Studio 2022 coming and that one is supposed to be pretty good. I'll be testing that as well. But for now, Visual Studio 2019 does not work inside Windows ARM, unfortunately. All right, so let's dig into some of the tests here. Here I have Windows 10 running inside Parallels. And this version of Parallels is, let's see here, Parallels. 16.5 is what I have here. And you can see that I have the option to get Parallels Desktop 17 for Mac. Now I've started up Windows 10 here. And at baseline, I want to check to see the memory usage and the CPU usage of Parallels Desktop as well as the virtual machine that's running inside of it. So let's check that out. I'm gonna pop open Activity Monitor and here is Parallels Desktop. Let's hop over to the CPU tab so I can show you that it's actually running under Apple natively, which is pretty cool. And it's using very little CPU, 0.5. Now this is gonna be the big one. Windows 10, that's the actual virtual machine running inside Parallels. And this is the one that's gonna be consuming most of the resources. Right now it's consuming about 90% of the CPU and it just jumped down to 2%. So we are seeing a fluctuation here. That's because I'm not actually actively using the machine. So it could be being backgrounded and that could happen. So it jumps from 2% to 90, I'd say. Now 90% doesn't mean it's actually using 90% of all the CPUs, of all the cores. This is a little confusing. On Mac systems, if you have eight cores and it's showing 90, that means it's only using one ninth of one core. If it was using 800%, that means it's using eight cores to 100% each. Let's take a look at the memory. So here we have Parallels Desktop, 176 megabytes. By the way, I'm writing all this down so that I can show you the results and the summary at the very end. And memory usage for the Windows 10 machine is 16.39 gigabytes. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, 16.39 gigabytes, how could that be? This machine is a MacBook Air and it has 16 gigs of RAM. How could the virtual machine be using more RAM than is on the machine? Well, this is actually a change that took place about seven years ago in Mac OS 10.9 in October 2013. And Apple changed its RAM allocation scheme and this is based on the principle that unused RAM is actually wasted RAM. On Windows systems free RAM might be a good thing but on Macs things are a little bit different. They consider more an important number to look at as memory pressure and swap used. So if we hop over here and we take a look at memory pressure it's down in the green and there's a little bit you even have a little message that says memory pressure is an indicator of the system's ability to meet the memory requirements of the user's activities. So right now it's down low and it's in the green. This is an approximate chart here. And swap used, that's an important number right there. And swap used, you want that to be as low as possible. So close to zero, 38 megabytes is pretty darn low. So we're good. We're good to go here. We are not exceeding the swap used. We're not having too much memory pressure. These are relative numbers, but they're indicating to me that we're okay. The system is in good shape. So this number here, the 16.44 gigabyte number is not actually physically what is being used. The total memory used is written down here and it's 13.27 gigabytes out of the 16 physical possible gigabytes. So we're okay. Now we'll see how Parallel 17 affects all this. But right now what I want to do is go through a couple of operational tests and jot down the times that it takes to start up a machine, resume, suspend, things that we commonly do. Suspend is something I use all the time. I don't shut down my machine very 
very often. I use suspend most of the time. So what I'm going to do is actually shut it down completely and do a cold boot. So there's the shutdown. I'm going to get my handy stopwatch application out so we can keep track of this. Let's pop open Parallels Desktop Control Center and you can see that I have Windows 10. It's not booted up yet. So I'm going to start it up. I'm going to press on the start button and start my timer. Let's go. I'll consider the desktop when we're at the desktop to be the final destination where I'll stop my stopwatch. And there we go, 21 seconds. Not bad. I think that's actually faster than my actual hardware Windows PC. Now, I want to go ahead and suspend this because that's the common action that I do. And I want to see how long that takes. Let's start. And that's two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, of course, it depends on what you have running on the machine. Right now, I don't have anything running on the machine. And if you have more memory being used, suspend is going to take a little bit longer, but I want to get a baseline. The baseline is what I'm going to use to compare doing this with the next version of Parallels. All right, now let's do a resume event, which is going to be just pressing this big old button right here. Let's go press start. And that's four seconds. And finally, one more and that's shut down. So I'm going to go to actions here and let's click on shut down and let's go. And that was 3.89 seconds. I'm going to round it up to four. Okay. So I'm going to say goodbye now to parallel 16.5 and I'm going to test out parallel 17 because I'm pretty sure it's going to be an improvement. I'm going to install that right now and I'll see you in a second. Oh, um, actually I just I want to do this in front of you real quick here because you will see that when I go to parallels and check for updates, look at this. It says parallel 17 faster resumes 38% faster for Windows. Wow. Up to 28% faster DirectX. I'm talking about games here. So maybe we'll test that in another video. And optimized for next level performance on Intel and Apple M1 chips. Now that M1 logo right there, not really the logo, but you know, they're talking about M1 specifically. That means they're targeting Apple Silicon. That means they're going out of their way to make sure that this thing works and works well on Apple Silicon. I can't say the same thing about VMware Fusion or VirtualBox. Where are those folks? This is good and bad. Parallels is doing a really good job, but it also means that, well, there's no competition right now for virtualization. So they have a little bit of a monopoly, not technically a monopoly, but right now they're ahead. They're ahead as much as Apple is ahead with the Apple Silicon arm and what they've done so far. So VMware, you better catch up. Intel, you better catch up. There's a lot of catching up to do for some folks. Anyway, that's good to see. They're really paying attention. Let's download that update. Okay, well, I didn't even get to have coffee because this thing took about a minute to update. And now we're on Parallels 17. Check it out. About Parallels version 17. Let's go. I'm going to do the same kind of tests. Here's my handy stopwatch and I'm going to start up Windows. Now this is Windows 10, by the way, not 11. So it's not up to the highest standards yet. So we're going to be testing that as well in another video. All right, ready? We're going to go. Now this is the first time Parallels 17 is starting up. So there might be something there. I'll maybe run this a couple of times to do a comparison. And we're at 18 seconds. So even though this was the first time I ran the software here, and this was the first boot in the new software, it still was a little bit faster. 21 seconds versus 18. Let's do a quick suspend here and see how long that takes. Wow. Wait, I didn't even have time to press the button. I missed it. That was insanely fast. All right, I'm going to get my resume time at least here. 3.68. So that resume time is not that much faster. I'm going to round that up to four seconds. So about the same. I want to see that suspend time again. That was insane. Suspend. Okay. Two seconds. So pretty fast, but not, a, not that much faster than the previous version. It's about the same. I'd say let's resume this one more time. 3.7. So about four as well. And finally, I'm going to shut this down. Four seconds for shutdown, about the same actually. So really we are winning a lot on the cold startup here. And let's also check the memory usage. So I'm gonna do another cold startup, time it again, just in case. Actually this, wow, this was eight seconds folks for the second cold startup. Wow. Let's take a look at the usage for memory and CPU. I'm gonna pop open activity monitor and we'll start with CPU here. Where are these? tasks. Sometimes it takes a little bit to update this. There we go. Parallel desktop is using about the same amount. It was 0.5 before. Well, it's 0.5 now too. Windows 10 is using 6.5 CPU and is bouncing a little bit, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. I haven't seen it hit a big number, but this 
number is not matter too much right now because I don't have anything running on Windows. Let's take a look at memory. Parallels desktop is using 147 less memory than before. And Windows 10 is using 16.26 at baseline. Swap and memory pressure are about the same as last time too. All right, folks, I'm going to throw the numbers up on screen right now so you can do some comparisons. The biggest change I see in this is that Windows cold startup time. However, this is with the older version of Windows. I will be testing Windows 11 preview and seeing if that has any improvements. Once I do that, the video will be linked right here. Check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.